This somewhat unbalanced thing is an Arctic F12TC 120mm computer fan, which is a bit of an oddball on today's computer fan market, in that it actually has an integrated NTC. This enables this fan to control its speed entirely on its own without any input from your computer motherboard, and indeed it enables you to put a controlled fan in a device which isn't a personal computer. This has quite a few interesting implications in that you have the freedom to place this sensor anywhere you desire. And if we move over to the box, we find that they're bragging about having specified a rather steep and aggressive fan profile on this thing, uh, which can be a very big upgrade over the thermal profiles you'll get in many PC motherboards. They have kind of tried to make a wanky graphic demonstrating it, and it kind of goes to the point. Your, your normal cheapo motherboard is basically going to have a linear fan controller which you can set the slope on, so that you will have a fan which ramps up very quickly or very slowly, but usually just linearly. However, this uh, F12TC uh, supposedly doesn't really do anything until the fan, reach, fan temperature sensor reaches 32 degrees Celsius, at which state it will ramp up very aggressively, up to about 38 degrees. And this is something I like quite a lot, because this means that your computer, while you're not really doing anything particularly intensive, is not going to make a whole lot of noise. However, once you get to the stage where you actually start requiring a bit of extra cooling, well, you'll be flying to the moon by the power of your fans. Beyond the temperature sensor, though, this fan is uh, pretty generic. Uh, as you saw, it has a bit of a unique fan blade design, but it doesn't seem to be anything particularly revolutionary. And beyond that, it's just uh, a normal sleeve-bearing fan full of wank words trying to excuse that, so... You're probably not looking at a particularly reliable fan, although Arctic do offer a six-year limited warranty on most of their products, including this one. However, if you read uh, all the information on the website, they basically have the power to deny you a warranty return for any reason they so desire. But you, know, you might be able to get a go at it. For a fan that costs uh, about seven euros here in Finland, uh, what do you expect? More to the point though, I intend to use two of these fans in a more industrial application, so to speak, they're going to be cooling a couple of my power supplies, so I was very interested to see how well the advertised fan curve coincided with reality, since it's going to be relatively picky in my application. So I actually took the time to construct a little test jig for it. This is a Philips Stewardess uh, portable clothes iron, which uh, I've just uh, connected up uh, through a power meter to my variable power supply. And uh, I've put a little heat sink on it, which the fan is blowing on, and uh, I've attached the thermal sensor along with a thermal probe going to my BM869 there, using the best thermal interface material on earth, blue tack. And I've graphed the speed to temperature performance of this fan by just cooking it up to a really bog standard computer and watching the BIOS tachometer. So, let's go to the data. And here you can see the data with the fans plotted in red and blue and the Arctic spec plotted in green. And uh, it's quite obvious that the fan curve of the actual fans isn't anywhere near as sharp as the advertised curve. But I quite well suspected that from the get-go. Uh, despite that, the curb you get isn't bad at all, with uh, the fans starting to ramp up somewhere around 34 degrees and reaching their maximum, actually their maximum specified speed of uh, 1350 RPM at uh, about 40. And then they just flatline and stay there. I'll just let the data speak for itself. But all in all, I think this is, these fans are going to be quite well suited for your average computer as long as you stick the temperature sensor near something reasonably warm, like the base of your CPU cooler or something. 
because uh, when we start out at about 30 something degrees over that's pretty hot for a case temperature so uh, perhaps Arctic could do with uh, lowering the start ramp of temperature on these things but yeah it can be compensated for for my purposes it's going to be absolutely perfect since I'm going to stick the temperature sensor in the heat sink anyway and as long as you do that I think you're going to do quite well the curve is indeed very sharp once it begins because as you can see down below the 30s they are just flatlined at just under 500 rpm at which speed they really don't make much of any noise whatsoever. As far as silence goes, these fans really do a quite reasonable job, although they are not in the leagues with something like a, a gentle typhoon or a, one of the more expensive Noctua fans. However, you will not get integrated temperature control with either a gentle typhoon or whatever the replacement is called or a higher end knock to a fan because with those you are doomed to use an external fan controller or your motherboard whatever that might entail with this you basically just get an NTC response starting at 34 degrees so you at least know very well what you're getting and it's going to stay the same no matter what you do if you flash your BIOS uh, which I think uh, is a really big upside to these fans as far as build quality is concerned they do seem to be a step above your generic Chinese sleeve bearing fan the bearing seems to have uh, a bit less friction and it just feels quite nice and solid, no play anywhere. And they've obviously got a, a bit of a custom molded case with some Arctic wank words written all over it, including the power specification on the side there. If I just grab one of a random PSU fan from the junk box and give it a bit of a rough handling, it really doesn't give as confidence in stilling a feel as one of these so while they are made in China they are sleeve bearing I I would wouldn't be too surprised to see them outlasting many other cheapo fans out there and uh, frankly they are cheapo fans costing about seven euros here in Finland and that's bloody well nothing so as far, far as bang for buck goes I'm really impressed with these especially for the unique feature you get, I mean, you would expect to pay premium for that, but these barely cost more than the non-thermally controlled version. In fact, I almost wouldn't be surprised if the non-thermally controlled version just had the same PCB, just without the thermal control stuff populated. It should also be noted that you can use an external fan controller with these, but it'll basically just act as a speed limit. At 5 volts, these fans will basically just to stay at their minimum speed constantly, not making any use of the, the t thermal control. And at uh, about 7 volts and all the way up to 12 volts, uh, you will basically get the same thermal response out of it, except the maximum speed will be limited according to the voltage. At 7 volts, it's about 800 RPM maximum. But sadly, as you saw in the beginning of the video, they do seem to have a bit of a quality control issue with the alignment of the blades on top of the motor. And unless these fans are sternly mounted, they have a tendency to wiggle and wobble around and generally make a mess. So that needs to be kept in consideration. You basically can't have them sitting loose on a table and blowing at something because they'll basically just walk away. So, with all that said, I guess we'll just have to let the time and potentially exploded power modules be the ultimate judge of these fans. So I thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful and enlightening. Cheerio!